Amen. I don't like scattered church people. Amen. You always say your church don't love you because you claim your own role. You got to get out of your own space and get close to somebody. Amen. Now clap for the person nearest you and let's appreciate God for them. Doesn't that feel better? I said, doesn't that feel better? We are blessed tonight to have my first, my, my first vice bishop of the Shabbat Fellowship of Churches, Bishop Brian Pleasant. Can we honor him and thank God? Thank you. Thank you. He's been with me for the past two days holding meetings on how we could better uh, what it is that we present to the earth and to the world and just how to better himself and uh, what my vision is. And I appreciate people that don't just have a pastor, but they literally are into their leader and what their leader's assignment is. I think we should applaud him one more time. I want to thank Brother Antolin Lundy. He has taken it upon himself to make sure his pastor continues to wear all type of shirts. This is my Shabbat hymn shirt. So can we thank God for Antolin and I appreciate him. I can't give up on Sister Jackson because she makes me some fly shirts too. Amen. But I don't want 50 shirts now. Y'all trying to compete. I have my creators and I'm happy about them. Amen. And I thank God for them. Our assistant pastors present on tonight. Elder Frank Mixon. Our executive pastor is on the West Coast doing what God has called her to do. But let's appreciate her as she is probably watching. Our associate pastor has a job with very uh, fluctuating hours working for Delta. Uh, also, he's been flying back and forth. His parents were in Atlanta. The hopes are on the road. They're halfway back to us, and we want to appreciate all of them for who they are. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, musicians. Get your Bibles. We have a lot of announcements to make on Sunday. I'm still right now, Prophet. I told Tracy Cleveland she wasn't going to make it through June. I told her. I tried to tell her. And now the doctors has confirmed. So we'll see. But we may have a grand Shabaki in on Monday. And I have other announcements to make of the achievement of your children and yourselves on Sunday. I won't be preaching. I will be the announcer. I'll be the mediator. Amen. Amen. And I will preach at 3 o'clock over at Macedonia in Eatonville. Those who can go, please come. But if you don't have the endurance to make it back to your service, stay home and make it to your service. I have the endurance to make it to all three because I'm raised in the grand old church of God in Christ. You can, that's where I'm raised. You cannot join in. We had Sunday school, Sunday service, a guest church in the afternoon, and our radio broadcast on Sunday night. There was no breaks on Sunday. Take a break on your day, but give God all of his. Amen? All right, get your Bibles. Thank you, Tannis, all of you. I want us to pause, and I must digress again, and I don't want to pity Pat. I have to thank God for our E-Church members who absolutely, y'all clap better. 
They look after their pastor. I love y'all so much. They asked me to start opening the church doors online like I do in here. That's crazy. So I'm going to have to be like doors of the church for online is open and those who work technology is going to have to be nice enough to know how to be the altar worker. All right, so that's an added creative space job. But I have three or four people who want to join this Sunday in Tampa. They said they've been everywhere, but they can't find a church like the 1403. So we might as well, I don't hear nobody, welcome them into our space. Thank you for coming to worship in the word. Look at somebody and tell them we're at worship in the word. Now we've been learning a whole lot of stuff about harlots, whores, prophets, preachers, pimps, prostitutes. We are becoming, and I need your support, extremely familiar with sin without feeling like it's a word that should be dispelled. I think churches should teach on it more because he died for the sins. See, y'all not, he did not die for your marriage. Your marriage might kill you, but he did not die for your marriage. On the contrary, he did not die for you to be wealthy. Even though there are people picking up doctrines for folk with itching ears, he died that our souls might be saved and then he went away to prepare a place for us. Now I'm going to start having folks sit up here that can talk to me that where he is, there we may be also. I have found out and it bothers me that 80% of preachers know nothing about sin. They know how to sin. They know how to pray for forgiveness. But they actually know nothing about sin. And if that's 80% of the preachers, that's 99% of the church. The person sitting near you right now actually does not know five scriptures that they can quote with sin in it. Don't test them because they'll get angry with you. The first one they saying is the wages of sin is death. That's the only one now. And because you're being honest with yourself and the length of time you've been saved you now recognize how little Bible you actually know. If he died for a thing, why you don't know a lot about the thing he died for? We talked about divorce versus separation. We learned a lot about that. We talked about Gomer and Hosea, we learned a lot about that. We talked about David, I don't hear nobody. We talked about Samson. We talked about Adam. We talked about Jonah. I'm not ready yet, but I need some lively people. Before we finish this series, we're going to talk about you. And I want you here on that day. You're not getting out of here perpetrating you're not getting out of here lying most people who are really saved our biggest frustration is not being able to live this the way that we really want to all right I ain't got help. my greatest frustration as a son of God is not being able to get better grades. When 
you're truly saved, you're hard on yourself. You're only angry at folk that are nosy because they don't want you to do better anyway. And they're only confirming about you what you already know about yourself. Come on, you know you a liar. You know you're a thief. You know you're a backbiter. You know when you're a whoremonger. You know, you know. Just look at three people. Don't touch them because they're angry. And tell them you know what you are. You don't have to be. You know what you are. Y'all know what y'all are, don't you? I know what I am. But at the end of the day, what makes us all even without being upset is the Bible says all have sinned. I hate people who can't admit that they have, but all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. But if we sin, we have an advocate. See how quiet this side stays? And if we confess our sins, he is faithful. Now, who you offended might not forgive you, but the one that created you is where it all begins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and then cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Let the church say amen. I don't have a character tonight. I have a conscience. I did tell you that the last character would be me. So the next one will be you. The last one will feature me. What, Bishop? You going to tell on yourself? I do it all the time. I just hate hanging out with folk that don't do it at all. You scare me. There's something about you that ain't right. It scares me when you let people in your group, your circle, your home, or your table, and you're right now admitting things to get them to become better people, and instead of them joining in on the narrative, they sit there like this, ain't you not talking to me? I'm glad I can't cuss, but this is this. This bothers me. Look at the sinner. You can cuss, Bishop. Go ahead. No, no, no. If we confess our faults one to another, not to Jesus, Forgiveness begins when you can confess it to somebody. You don't have to give them details. You don't have to mention someone's name to cover your name. But forgiveness begins with confession. Not of your sin, of your participation. Confess what your fault was. Then pray for one another. Oh, y'all don't know the scripture? Then the effectual fervent prayer. No, y'all don't know it. Of the righteous of their live months. Next scripture says, and if they have committed sin, it shall be forgiven them after they learn to confess. No forgiveness without confession. Saying sorry to God is not repentance. A real woman who's been hurt by man over and over and over and over and over again, which I, you know, whatever, I'll say sorry for all the men that have done this because they ain't going to take their role. So we've done it to y'all over and over and over again. And no, 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 don't try to be nice now. A real man understands that when a woman stays with him after repetitive issues, that when he finally means sorry... Sorry doesn't work until she asks you, what are you sorry for? 
What she's trying to see is, what action are you owning? Y'all ain't talking. Because you could be saying sorry for something I don't even know nothing about. I want to know, y'all quiet brothers, what action are you referring to? Y'all see all them women clapping, brothers? I own my actions. And I don't wait till I'm busted to own them. My conviction with God makes me bust myself. <laughs> I love peaceful sleep at night. I don't like laying near anybody or laying where, worrying about what that phone call is. Don't answer that. I might as well snitch. When a man tell you don't answer the phone, he know there's a call coming through somewhere. Don't answer that door. It's late. They got the wrong house. Go answer that door, baby. Go answer that door. Cut my phone off and let it charge. No, no, leave it on. It can charge while it's on. Leave it on. I want you to visit some scriptures with me. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 through 16, because you only know one of the verses by memory but we never visit the prior or previous verses. Second Chronicles chapter 7, thank you for pushing me on, she, verses 12 through 16. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. I have chosen this place to myself for in house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people. I know y'all didn't know the other verses. Which are called by my name. Shall humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. He's not talking about the world. He said my people. Then will I hear from heaven, and unfortunately, the scripture is proven that it's his people that are doing all the sinning. I will forgive their sin. Not the world, my people. And I will heal their land. Y'all are not talking. Now mine eyes shall be opened and my ears attend unto their prayers, which means when they were coming to church and didn't repent, they were making noise, but I wasn't listening. Now that they have repented of their sin, they have my attention again. If a man, see I was trying to be nice, holistic, and theological, but if a man has a problem and he's going to continue to cheat, the least that you should be good at is giving her attention. She ain't that upset that you cheat and she upset that you giving somebody else her attention. Y'all ain't up. And you'll give the cheater, y'all don't hear me, three hours and give her 30 minutes. She's not upset. She knew what you were before you married her if she paid attention to her intuition. For, for a real woman to be fooled, she has to cut off her intuition. Like some of you got it off right now. That's why you're looking around. Now mine eyes shall be open, my ears attend unto the prayer, hear me, that is made where? In this place. He's talking about our addressing, y'all are not talking. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house. 
So when you read, if my people which are called by my name, he was not referring to you praying at home or you praying in your car. He was saying people that met at a certain location to send corporate prayer up to heaven. Then he said, before they learn to do that, they got to stop sinning. They got to forgive each other. They got to stop backbiting on each other. I cannot hear a unified prayer with a disconnected group, right? I'm trying to help some of you that God will not give you the attention you need from him until you straighten some things out down here. Look at somebody, give them the three word word that I'm about to give you and tell them get it right. Just get it right. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, Dr. Tracy, that my name might be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Oh, message Bible. God appeared unto Solomon that very night and said, I accept your prayer. Yes, I've chosen this place as a temple for sacrifice, a house of worship. If I shut off the supply of rain from the skies and order the locusts to eat all your crops and send a plague on my people, come on whoever's working, and my people, my God defined people, responding by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence, what, and turning their backs on their wicked lives, I'll be there ready for you. They don't like this party. I'll listen from heaven. I'll forgive your sins. I'll restore your land to health. Let's go on. From now on, I'm alert day and night to the prayers offered at this place. Believe me, I've chosen and sanctified this temple that you have built. My name is stamped on it forever. My eyes are on it and my heart is in it always. As for you, if you live in my presence, as your father David lived, pure in heart, in action, living the life I've set out for you, attentively obedient to my guidance and judgments, then I'll back your kingly rule over Israel. I'll make sure on a sure foundation, I'll make it sure, I'll make it a sure thing on a sure foundation, and so on, and so on, and so on. And the church said, Amen. amen. Look at your neighbor again, tell him, get it together. I first told you make it right, but now I'm telling you get it together. Say that to a neighbor and watch their facial expressions. You can tell who got demons or had a bad day. Just look at them and tell them get it together. And if you're a parent, use the words my parent use after you love them, but they don't like the way you love them, and tell them fix your face. There's another three words, right? Fix your face when I'm talking to you. I hear Brother Berlin preaching to me my own words, and I'm loving it. Romans chapter 5, verse 11 through 13, King James. I love you who love the word. I love you. Romans 5, verse 11 through 13, I love the word. And not only so, but we also joy in God through... Our Lord Jesus Christ, that's verse 11, by whom we have now received atonement. The atonement. Wherefore, as by one man, how many men? Thank you for, for your participation. Sin entered into the world and death also came because of sin. Sin came because of one man, but death came because of sin and so death has now passed upon all men for one reason for all have sinned are y'all acquainted with me teaching 
For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Message by. I got to watch some of your faces because I need to see whether you're really into God or just into church. <sighs> now that we are set right with God by means of this sacrificial death, what made us right with God was not repentance, it was somebody died. The consummate blood sacrifice, there is no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. Jesus' death set me right. Tell somebody that his death set me right. And we should live a life worth him dying. See, you didn't clap there, but I'll say it again. My E-Church members, talk to me. If somebody dies for you, gives you a heart put themselves on the donor and you're living because they donated an organ. You should respect that organ by living the life that the other person could no longer live. There's no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. If we were at our worst, we were put on friendly terms with God just because of this sacrificial death, let's go, of his son. Now that we're at our best, y'all don't like scriptures? Just think of how our lives would expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plotting prose. We sing and shout our praises to God through Jesus the Messiah. Some folks say, why are you doing all that jumping and shouting? Because you should have been dead. You should have been dead dead. Let me say, all of us should be dead. He loves some of us enough to let you finish sinning and still said, I love you. You didn't even love him enough to stop or decrease the activity. He waited. Then you come to his house, quiet, pious, laid back, talking about I'm not a screamer, you're a sinner. And if you were drowning in a pool, you would scream then, wouldn't you? Because there's a life God. Well, why wouldn't you scream for the God of life? That while you are drowning in your sins. Then the Bible said, and while we were yet sinners. Yet sinners. He died. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14. My last scriptures of the night. Isaiah, chapter 14. Verses 12 through 14. The King James. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Y'all know who that is? In case you don't know, it's the devil. That's his original name. Before he actually messed up. 
the pronounced name for talkers was Haleo. Then, uh, as they Americanized that word, it became halal. You know halal, you don't know halal, because halal is on the highest praise for hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Halal by itself, halal means celebrity. So Satan's biggest sin is he thought he was famous, more famous than his creator. And it got to his head like it's getting to some of y'all. And he decided to create a ministry of his own because he wasn't getting enough power in the one where he was. Oh, y'all don't like? And said, I will exalt my name, my throne above the throne of God. So when you go to church and you sit there and don't praise God, you are in the posture of Lucifer. He was created to praise and worship. Now he wants to be a God. And your posture tells who you are in your church. Your posture. That's why in psychology, it's called body language. Some of you have a body language that say you're more important than who you really think you are. I'm going to get a little apostolic right now. I'm supposed to be teaching. There's only one Lord. I got to get an apostolic. One faith. Y'all don't. One baptism. And you ain't none of them. Everything in this church will continue to grow even if you go. Because you are not God. And if God sent you, he wouldn't send you away. God always completes what he starts. Let me show you I'm not lying. Y'all remember that Jesus was sent. I told you to die for the what of the world? Thank you for those who are articulating. To die for what? But did you forget that there was a moment in time where he went through and went to the garden of Gethsemane and asked God, let this cup pass? There was a time when he was like, I decided these people ungrateful. I done healed them. I don't want to do this. I don't want to die on the cross. God did not answer him. Y'all didn't hear me. And he knew God well enough that if I got no answer, I must come finish what I'm starting. So he said, nevertheless, not my will, Lord. Y'all don't want Thy will be done. Your will and God's will will never be the same will. Now, I had to do some in-depth research. This is for you theologians now. All of you that have positions and titles that I know and some that I don't know that when we sit, your biblical knowledge is far from the title that you carry. I needed to know why Elder Curry couldn't God let his son bail. You, you his daddy. Y'all, see, y'all ain't using your mind. You don't want to see your son crucified on no cross for some ungrateful people. When you were God, just Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim, an unpronounced name, ha, you was killing everything that sinned. So why would you want him to die for what you continue to kill everybody for? Oh, y'all, he said, Todd, study. And I studied and I came up with this, eisegetical, but yet perfect in its ex example for three folk who were screaming. He said this. He said, I have to be able to do more than what I created would do. I said, what you mean? He said, if Abraham would have killed Isaac, there's no way I can't kill Jesus. Because can, I can't let a creature outlove me and be willing to kill his son 
and me hold my son back. See, some of y'all got double standards. My standard is this, on Christ. We ain't having church, that's my standard. I walk away from my mother, my father, my best friends, this church, anybody who tries to make me change how I serve God. You will become a vapor. I mean it. And some of you say that, but you stayed with that idle relationship. You left your church to join your boyfriend's church. You crazy. You left your church over some money. You are really hungry. You must have forgot that God just gave us scriptures where he said, my name, my heart, I'll make it rain in the place that I've chosen. If you move your place, you lose your space. See, the issue is, all right, let me leave it. You got to stop running where rain is and wait till it starts raining. That's the way you do it. All right, I think, because God said, if I close up heaven, that there be no rain. Then that means where you going to go and think it's going to rain before I let it. That ain't rain. That's a sprinkler system you playing with. See, you pay for the sprinkler water. You don't pay for the rain. Rain is free. But some of y'all paying a high spiritual water bill trying to make people believe that you're succeeding. Success never comes through sin. I'll say that one more time and again. Success never comes by way of sinning. There's a scripture that proves it. If I say it and one of you don't jump for real, then I might as well leave. It said in Joshua 1 and 8, it says, be of good courage. Fear not. It says, meditate on that word day and night to do it, to live it, to love it. And if you do, ye shall have, not success, the word is good success. So if there's a good success, then there is actually a bad success which normally comes through the vehicle of sinning, compromise, changing all the time. Mm -hmm. I got help, whoever that voice is, that's pure. But the rest of you, some of you still feel guilty. We've been talking about sin for like over a month and you didn't catch nothing yet. Some of you have had the nerve to be trying to figure out what sin you doing. You got to think that hard? Some of you had the mitigated goal to be thinking about the last time you sinned. You got to think that far? Oh, because the black church limits sin to smoking, sex, and drinking. Oh, that's why you can't find yours. When the last time you gossiped, lied, truth breakers, had a mental thought that one sanctified? When the last, no, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I spoke to a guy, but he knows I'm never going to sleep with him. He knows that we can only be friends. But why are you entertaining him? That's sin making you entertain him. See, talk to me, because I'll start embarrassing everybody. What in the world? Who you think you fooling sitting up in here like you ain't sin anytime soon? You hang out with cussing friends on your job. You got two groups of friends. You got your church friends. 
And what's terrible is you trust your worldly friends more than your church friends. The only way your worldly friends could love you is there's something about you that reminds them of themselves. You make them sin comfortable. You'll talk about each other's sin, but you won't talk about your friend's sin. Ain't that special? Oh, I'm sorry. How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down from the ground, which didst weaken the nations? I'm sorry, I'm boring y'all over here. For thou hast said in your heart, not to my face. God is saying, you know better than to talk in my face. So, Lucifer, you've been talking behind my back. You have... It's, You've said in my heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt the throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the what? What? The mount of what? What are we? We are a congregation. What he's saying is, I'm going to set my new job up in a church. Satan does not own the club. Sin does. Satan does not own the whole house. Sin does. What Satan wants is God real estate. I know y'all don't understand that. That's why we have false prophets, false bishops, false liars. He wants to set up in the congregation. Let me say this about Satanus Diablos, Lucifer, Halio. Let me say this about our adversary, our opposer. And I need more people that look hungry. He has never smoked a joint. He has never been a fornicator. He has never been part of the LGBTQI. He has never been associated with any addictions. His sin or his iniquity is that he wanted to be God. Now this is a problem. When you can sin and not apologize to God, you are a God. Now I need to talk about this. When you can judge everybody else and not judge yourself, you are trying to be somebody's God. Nobody's God. We're supposed to be a God example. Some of you ain't good at neither. You sure ain't no God, but you're not even a God example. Well, I'm a good example. I don't want you to be a good example right now. I want you to be a God example. I want people to see you and say, you are the only reason why I made a better decision because I haven't seen many people who would handle it the way that you did. Some of y'all act worse than people in the street. What I'm saying is, when are you going to put you aside and tell your flesh, I know that in this dwelleth no good thing, but my body is the temple, they don't like this, of the Holy Ghost. So it's not what I feel like doing, it's what am I required to do. Let me give you some requirements for talkers. Love those that despitefully use you. Say all man of evil against you falsely for my sake. And let me admit to talkers, that's difficult. Especially based upon where you're born, what state, what city, what borough, what project. Because there are a group of people in here that just became trash talkers after they got saved. So now they jump off because they know you too saved to actually fight. But there's a group of us that if we say we'll slap you, I promise you we'll slap you in your mouth. If I tell you 
say one more thing, I'm going to slap you, you better draw your gun because I'm going to slap you. See, I'm not from there. Bishop, I thought you were saved. I'm as saved as you allow me to be. See, you must be a God example for others to still be who they need to be. Some of you are here as decoys. You are here to prove that you are right about somebody. You're a decoy. Your job in life is not to prove who's wrong. It's to help people that are wrong learn to live right. That's your job. Talk to me. I am my brother's and that I am. Everyone that I personally love in here, don't take this wrong, everyone that I've had personal interactions with, spend time with you just one-on-one, -on -one, trust me, I've researched you. I know more about you than you think I know. You are not that supernatural. At all. And if some of these people actually knew your past, See, everyone with a pass should be able to give somebody a pass. Now, I don't understand how you know what God has delivered you from and still in the process of delivering you that you could even talk about anyone else. They going to put you out of your own church. So Satan, Deacon Mays, thought that he was a celebrity, Deacon Jackson. So what God did for three folk who get happy that ain't mad. Because if you mad now, you are borderline demonic. See, Satan does not like being exposed. And God hates imposters. So some of y'all don't feel good right now because you've been in a church that you've not made a real friend with or been a real friend to anybody, which makes you a decoy. Jesus never saved us to stay in our corners. He saved us, let me get out of here, to be the strength of each other. And if you find your brother overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, y'all not help me carry, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourselves. This could have been me. Some of you are too serious to be sanctified. You're too cut and dry to be a good God example. Children ran to Jesus. Prostitutes washed his feet. Zacchaeus invited him to the crib to eat. Who wants to hang with you? That should be your question. And if you can't find too many folk, then that means you're not really equipped. That ain't the Holy Ghost in you. That's how you were raised. You mean by nature. You cut and dry, stuck up by nature. You're still carrying the pain of people that didn't cause it up in here. And that pain has taken permanent residence in your soul. That if anybody even looks like what you used to be with, they become a victim of a situation that they had nothing to do with. Some of you don't like them that are screaming because they're making you mad. Because this is your life that I'm describing. Save and miserable. Save and empty. 
Save Saints of our Holy Ghost field and alone. No balance whatsoever. You so miserable, you got to grind day and night, night and day. Opening a business, can't get no clients because your clients don't like your body language. Then going to your pastor, pray for me, Bishop. I can't seem to get a man. I can't seem to get a plan. I can't seem to get no land. Sound like I'm rapping. That's because it ain't the situation around you that's got to change. It's you. Look at your neighbor and tell him, make some changes. Make some changes. Little tweaks. You don't have to make major changes. Sometimes it's just a little here. Little there. Verse 13 again, for thou hast said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I'm almost done now, is it? I will exalt my throne and above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Because y'all know south is in hell, north is upward. Y'all mean, I will ascend. Everything he wants to do is a promotion. Everything. Ascend, ascend, ascend. Oh, y'all quite ascend. Y'all quiet. Everything is a promotion. Am I born you teachers and pastors and bishops who uh, ascend? I will ascend. I ascend. Ascend. Mountains, thrones, stars. Everything is high. Everything is high. And he thought that he could defeat Jesus with the same promotion. He said, let me take you up to the top of the temple. Let me take you up again to an exceeding high that's Matthew 4 1 through 11 to exceeding high mountain let me show you all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of it and all of this you can have if you just bow down and worship me and Jesus had to counteract him with the word and the reason why some of you have no victory you know no Bible None. And you're avoiding a day that's been carved out for you to become uh, what I, awesome in your arsenal so that when you are approached on Monday, you got a scripture from Sunday. You approached on Friday. They say, we're going to fire you. You say, you know my bishop just preached a sermon about promotion. I don't need a promotion. All I know is if God be for me. Because you have no biblical literacy. You get angry easy. You quit too fast. You have no biblical acumen whatsoever. I would that you would prosper and be in health, but it says even as your soul prospers, the soul prospers by what the soul is fed. So you cannot prosper past your knowledge of scripture. Huh? Oh, I thought I heard somebody talking behind my back. Let me read my statement. Let me read two paragraphs of my research. I can't preach it on Sunday morning because I won't be preaching, but I'll be here. It is my opinion. What did I say? Do I have the right to one? It is. Oh, I'll tell you when it's facts and when it's opinionated. It is. It is my opinion, not a fact as of yet, that the church is a place for the saints to gather to worship their God in unity. But at the same time, y'all missing it, it is a refuge for those who need sanctuary. I'm going to say it one more time because you done missed it. Know why you missed it? 
because you don't read the Bible. I just told you that God sanctified this place. So I believe church, the building, is constructed as a heavenly zip code on an earthly planet. Where God can say, this is my house. Right? That's the hospital. That's the gas station. Y'all hear that's Duke Energy. Just teach anyway. That there is Disney World. Y'all ain't talking. Over there's Universal. This is Sea World. This is Restaurant Row on Sand Lake. Here is another part for Goma. Y'all ain't talking to me. He said, but where is the house that you build unto me? So God, because he cannot bring his whole planet here right now, he basically fragmented it and called it Baptist, Kojic, Jehovah Witness, Church of Christ. He carved himself up into small pieces where people can find him anywhere. Y'all and, and and guess what? You're mad. He'll be at your house, but he don't live there. If God lived in your house, you wouldn't be put out, evicted, foreclosure, worried about your car. He don't live there. You have to come where he lives for him to better where you reside. They don't hear me, do they? I know they weren't going to hear me. Y'all play hooky from church like you did from school. Most people that always play hooky never went to college. That's how you got pregnant that day. I stayed home from school. That's how you got put out and they found you high or had your first piece of crack is you weren't where you were supposed to be. That's how you got raped. I hate to give a hard example is you should have had your behind in class but instead you went with three boys and two girls and they snuck something in your drink. Y'all quiet now, right? <laughs> You were somewhere that you didn't belong. And sometimes the somewhere you don't belong is your house. I think I'll stay home today. Okay, who house is it? We're going to find out because... Don't ever stay where you can't pay. And don't stay where you're going to need his help to pay for it. It's best to go to his house. You want a loan from the bank? Don't call the bank. You know you got bad credit? Don't talk on the phone. Show up face to face hoping that you find somebody who will give you grace. Ain't nobody feeling you on no phone. Look how quiet it got. Some of you can't even date properly because texting has become the new way of dating. When am I going to see you? You seeing me right now. Can't even have proper sex no more. You're sexting. Laugh all you want to. Welcome to Wednesday. It is my opinion. I'm off of it. It's not a fact yet. That the church is a place for the saints to gather to worship their God in unity. But at the same time, it is a refuge for those who need sanctuary. Why I am saying this for two folk who will enlighten me and push me is I'm tired of hearing everybody say the church is a hospital, right? This church is not your hospital. You better get healed or just don't come back. We do not house sick people. And we do not allow you to stay sick while you're housed. A hospital's job is to find a remedy 
or a cure so that we can get you out of here. This is not a hospital. This is the house of God. Will you rehearse that to two or three neighbors and mean it when you say it? This is the house of Yahweh. I liked church better when I was young because y'all make me mad. God be speaking, y'all just walking, checking your text, drinking water. This is not that kind of church. Stop all that freaking walking. You want too much attention. Use the bathroom one time, then put yourself back in that seat. Stop sitting there, people, that can draw your attention away from you while God's trying to bless you. What? This is the... And if this is how you treat his house, I wonder how your house going. Because the Currys are teachers and a few of you in here are also teachers, let me explain and define refuge, then let me explain and define sanctuary, and then I'll close with my two paragraphs. Can I define these two words? Right. Refuge is shelter or protection from danger. Simple. Shelter or protection from danger. The reason why some of you were sent here, even though you don't like where you were sent, is where you were was dangerous for your soul. Now, I know you don't believe this. Where you were did not preach the whole Bible. Where you were let you get away with too much foolishness. You don't like the restrictions of being here because you thought that your presence would be enough. But God did not send you here to let you hear me. He died for the sins of the world. Uh -uh, Y'all not hear me. To save us from sin, not to save us to sin, right? And some of you were part of churches that told you grace was God's way of saying you can sin and don't worry about it. I'm here to tell you that's a disgrace. Let me tell you, I'm here to tell you don't diss your grace. I wish... You've got to tell God, I should be living better by now because I'm sitting under better teaching. I am learning what your word says. How can you sit better and do worse? The only way that can happen is better was never in you. Again, you're a decoy. I've been waiting to hear from you, Prophet Rahim. I've been waiting for a long time, too. Some of you are afraid as leaders and pastors to preach against sin. You know why? You were never called to pastor. You were never called to pastor. That you can allow the lives of people that you see going downward to stay in your face and never say something because you might possibly lose them as a member. I'd rather lose you as a member than to watch you lose your soul. You can go on and do what you got to do, but you will not stand before God and say, my pastor never told us. No, no, no. I'm not going to give you the right to use me as your excuse. Can I tell five of you the truth? Not all of you. Five of you who will jump for me. Do you know how difficult it is for me to study? Not just for you twice a week, for other churches, other Zoom calls, things that you don't even know I'm involved with. And do you know what it is for me to have to preach to you the word of God 
and sit here and hear me preaching to help you while the stuff that I'm saying is also hurting me? Do you even know how many times I told God, can we not say that part right there? Can we edit this part right here? And if I got to sit through it, y'all, and sit with it. No, no, I don't just preach it. I got to sit with it. When I'm studying certain sermons and get to the Greek, I'd be like, now, maybe we should cut that part out right there. Why, though? I hear you nosy people. Bishop, why does it bother you? Let me help five people who stay members and push me. Because some of the things that I preach, I'm presently doing. No, no, no. You can get out whoever I'm pointing. Y'all can get right up on out of here right now. You got what you needed. As soon as he preached something, I don't like I'm out. You can go right now because I'm telling you. And people be thinking I'm playing. You could step to my loo, my darling, right now. This church will continue because God's name is written on this church. Now that I'm sure of. Refuge, a place that provides shelter, something which has recourse in difficulty. So church is not just a place to worship. It's a place that when you go there, the things that were chasing you must stop at the door. That's why the old church said, if I can just get to the house. Of See, y'all don't have that. You try to find peace by staying away from the house of God. But your grandparents and mom and them said, just as soon as my feet, y'all have the wrong, you have the wrong approach. You go to church twice a week. We went four times plus a choir rehearsal. And I'm going to say something, get mad. Yes, I believe that we that got saved back then are more saved than you are today. I believe that 1,000 times. We know how to sit near a hater and say I love you and not be a hypocrite. We know how to get under your skin. But you ain't going to never make me leave my church, my pastor, my wife. Y'all don't want me to preach this, huh? Satan is not strong enough to come between me and everything God has put me in covenant with. Because if I keep my eyes stayed on Jesus. My eyes are not focused on the problems or the people. I will lift up my eyes to the hill. Come on, Bible scholars. From which cometh my help. All oh, my help. Church is so different where pastors and people don't even feel God's presence anymore. They done found a fill-in for worship, a fill-in for dancing, a fill-in for tongue speaking. I just want you to listen. Man, be black. Say it loud. What's wrong with y'all? We ain't had no quiet block parties. We ain't had no quiet pet rallies. We ain't got no quiet amusement parks. But you gonna go to God's address and set up your throne in his house. One more definition. Then I'm gone. The word sanctuary. Somebody shout sanctuary. I see spirits now. This is unusual, but 
Shout sanctuary. Sanctuary is like refuge, but it has one different thing to it. Sanctuary is protection or a safe place. Especially from someone or something that's been chasing you for a long time. Illegal immigrants find sanctuary in America. Y'all hear how quiet you're in the United States. They find safety. If you're in the days of the Roman Empire, when certain people were being hunted to kill them, they would run into a church and they would scream, not whisper, sanctuary! They would then wake up the priest who is their visible God. If the priest woke up and heard the scream of these people being intimidated, he would look at the opposition and say they are in sanctuary. When you get to the 1403, it is your job to cry out sanctuary. This is not just your church. This is your refuge. Oh, yeah. And your sanctuary. I hear you. I thought it was preaching on sin. See, don't go ahead of me. You do you. Stay in your slow lane. Refuge. He is my refuge and my fortress. A very present help in the time of trouble. Then it says, until I went into the sanctuary, then I understood their end. Which means there's some answers you will never get until you enter. I know you don't believe it. I know you don't believe it. So when God wrote, if my people which are called by my name would themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, what he was saying is, I blessed them with so much stuff that what I've given them have kept, kept them away from me. He says, now they are evil. They are sinning because they made a covenant. Lord, if you do this for me, I'll give you more of what I'm already giving you. He said, now I can't find them. They're at their home. So what I have to do is I've got to make their land sick. Y'all ain't talking. So he starts calling the bank to put a, a, a threat on your house. He puts a threat on your education. He puts a threat on your marriage. Then he said, if you want to be healed from this, y'all don't hear me, you must turn right, from your wicked ways. This, what? The word turn means repent. I know repent means to turn. Repent means to rethink. God said, I told you, seek me first, and then all these things would be added. I didn't say, let all these things make me last. I said, whatever position I hold, I want to keep my position without having to beg you for it. That is sin. Not alcohol. Not drug addiction. Non-participation, no attendance, no ministry activation, sin. Sin, having always be told what to do, what you do, you do it at your worst, sin. They didn't read it, I had to calm down because I was getting excited. And I heard some of you, Bishop, you said you won't get excited. I didn't promise you that. I'm going to always get excited about the goodness. When I think of, when I think. <laughs> and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out hallelujah. Come on, tell him hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I am truly closing now. Why can't you wake up? Why isn't your spirit and soul in a posture where I can't wait to get to church? Who gets on your nerve that bad? That you don't, I wake up early on Sunday, Wednesday, I study early. I can't wait to get here. It's not about just seeing you. It's knowing that when I walk in here, I can cry out sanctuary. The mere fact that you made it where the devil wants to keep you from lets you know that the God that's in the building will follow you home. Yeah. And he walks with me. You're going to leave it right there. Watch it. Here is where we close. Here is where we close. Montez, Sir Montez, Son Montez, if you ever want to know whether God actually loves you and he's not through with you and he's going to take you to another level, this is how you know it. He's been talking to you about how much more you could be and do than what you're doing right now. When God steps to you, and you start talking to yourself. I should be doing more. Lord, help me. Increase me. Blah, blah, blah. When the Lord is talking to you about how much more he should be getting out of you, he's letting you, you know, you are not called. I am not called. So be what you say you are. Don't be chosen with the posture of the called. To whom much is given. Meet the requirements. Some of you don't meet the requirements, but you have so much you want God to do. Then you're going to bless him from what he blessed you with, why don't you bless him with the little you have now? No, no. Don't make a deal that he don't win. He give you more, then you finally start giving more. What? He, what? That's his. The key word was sacrifice. Doing something right now that will kill me to do it. That's a sacrifice. Something has to die for something better to be done. Closing right here. So I thought the Bible said through one man's sin, sin entered the world. Raheem Warren, sometimes I hear you teaching, you be getting deep and some of that stuff be borderline scaring me. So I want you to get it all the right way from who feeds you, not from who's feeding you, 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 I thought y'all, I thought I read it right. Through one man's sin, sin entered the world. Y'all read it? And then through the son of God who became the son of man, through one man's sacrifice, grace. And because of grace, the law is somewhat done away with. But it still exists. Like if I become a police officer, the law is not as strong for me as it is for them that I pull over. See, everybody got quiet. A police officer can be speeding 100 miles an hour trying to catch a speeding car, but I'm speeding to catch you. We are both breaking the law, but I'm doing it to keep the law. Y'all follow me? See, some of y'all, and some of y'all use what some of us do to continue to do what you're doing when you don't understand we're doing this for a different reason. Oh, the claps came over here today. Yeah. Yeah. 
A baby helped her mama deliver a baby last year. She was seven. The baby was delivered with the baby girl coaching the mama to push. That does not make her a doctor. And because some of you are used every now and then in a supernatural way, y'all quite does not make you no pastor, no prophet, no bishop, y'all no apostle. You were just the one available at that time. In closing, I found out something. Satan, and I might get in trouble, so y'all pray for your pastor. No, pray for me from your heart. Satan is such, thank you, an insignificant, and I know you mean it, right? I got some fellas in here who should be like, we got you. But I got a woman talking about, I got you, Bishop. I don't even trust some of my guys. They don't fight. But let me tell you right now, right? I literally... Now, Frank might get you, so I ain't going to talk behind him. Come on. But listen to me well. Satan is so insignificant. He's insignificant. So insignificant. He's so insignificant, y'all ain't going to scream, that when he sinned, it didn't affect us. It took Adam. Satan had already done it, but it could not penetrate. Y'all quiet. So that's why you cannot use the devil made me do it. He is insignificant in your choices. Look how quiet it just got. I just had a demon at the time. All right, claim it because you can't have the Holy Ghost in him at the same time. So maybe you need to admit you don't have the Holy Ghost. Then we can go along with the devil made you do it. One no devil. That was sin. I see y'all sentence. Bishop, isn't Satan the founder of sin? No. No. The Bible gives the credit to who he gave it to through one man's sin. God ain't never been upset, look at me, in scriptures with sinners sinning. Never. See, quiet over here, quiet. Thank you for being quiet over here. God has never been concerned about a creature doing what they're created to do. It's when the creature starts doing what they're not created to do. He's only been upset with saints who sin. If my people, y'all quiet, not all people. Look how quiet it got. So some of you need to just go on and be a part of all. He was never upset with the fornicators in the Bible that fornicated. But when David did it, it's because you mind. Y'all still getting quiet. Wasn't upset with any sinners who did it, but when a king was wicked and no longer served God, he said, because you're mine. I think y'all need to spend the next three days finding out who's your creator. And I mean it. And what does your creator expect of you? You that are clapping, your bills will probably be in pain. You that ain't, you act like you're paying close attention, okay? All of you that keep blaming the church for the reason why you need a break from church, you demonic. Because the church ain't done a darn thing to you. 
Your job did it, you didn't quit. Your husband did it, you didn't get a divorce. Your children did it, you didn't kick them out. Oh, but when the church do something you don't like. That's because you think there's no penalty. You actually think there's no penalty. It is. He makes your land sick. Things stop functioning in a healthy manner. Then you start looking for demons under the table, in the clothes, around people. They got the wrong spirit. It's you. I'm going to tell the story and then let's give and close. There was a man who married a wife and this wife was just extremely nosy. Her problem was, son in the back, she just nosy. You ever met them kind of people? Well, then talk to me about it. Just, and he worked so hard to where she doesn't have to work at all. So all she does is keeps the house clean. They don't have kids, kids grown. All she does is you know, go and till some of the land. She puts the clothes in the dryer. She makes sure that when he comes home, he feels value. But every time he comes home, she's talking to him about the neighbor. See, y'all cry. He come home. Hey, baby, guess what I saw today? See, some of you ain't talking now because this is you, right? Guess what I heard today? Look on Facebook. Let me show you something. You don't share no scriptures, no testimonies, no Sunday experiences. And her husband would let her get away with it and hug her and kiss her. And they go about their day, wake up, start another day. The husband one day got tired of it. He went to one of his friends. He says, if she tell me one more thing, that the neighbors are doing. I'm leaving. Y'all are mighty quiet now. He says she don't have to work. She don't have to worry about bills. She drive what she want to drive, wear what she want to wear. And the first thing I got to hear when I come into my house is what the neighbors are doing. See, I got five healthy people like talk to me. So one day he came home early. And she was in the kitchen. And she said, come here. Look through the window. See, there go the neighbor. He about to leave. He not telling nobody upset. He said, she out there every other day. Hanging them dirty clothes on the clothesline. And he looked and he said, yeah, I see it. He said, but why is that your business? He said, just keep our clothes clean. Yeah, focus on what's in this house, y'all. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all quiet. Stop bringing me what everybody house is doing. And We didn't do that at the church I came from. Then go back there. I bet they won't be doing this. And I bet you won't be as important as you'd say you were here when you go back there. You'll really just be a member. You go back. Hold on. He said, to her, the clothes ain't dirty. She said, them clothes are dirty, and I knew you was going to take up for them people because that's how you are. What you come home early for? He said, I came home early because I want to help you out. He said, now, when I came home, let me tell you. He said, when I came home, I was already outside. You judging from the inside. Oh, y'all ain't talking. He said, I just left from being out there. And I disagree with you. She said, what's wrong with you? What's, uh, I disagree with you. 
You calling the clothes dirty and I'm telling you they clean. How can you say they clean? Are you looking? He said, because I'm not looking from where you looking from. He said, outside, go outside, learn to say hello. You find out they clean. Said, what's wrong from seeing them here is these darn windows dirty. And the reason that some of you judge folk is your lenses are dirty. You're judging people from a different lens. And this is sin. I'm done, all standing. This is sin. This is sin. To judge someone from a place that you don't even know them personally. They can't find refuge. They can't find sanctuary. Because some of you are just decoys. You came to gather enough negative information to continue to build your personal situation. The people that I allow in my spaces for one reason, the people who allow me in their space that I want to be in their spaces for another reason. I want to be around people that make me want to be better. Just being around them says, I should be doing much better. There's no way you can say you know the people you know and be the way you are. Unless you're just there to be there. There's no way I could be Michael Jackson's best friend and have a talent to sing and not get a deal. Some of y'all be dropping names that don't pick you up. Something wrong with this thing. I often say this, and it hurts me to say it, but I don't have to say it as often. But for some of you who know people that are close to me, that are in my family, they say that's my dad biologically or adopted or whatever. To see their actions that don't match mine, don't dare think that I'm like them. I am not. The question should be, how could you be around people of a certain caliber and still function in the level that you're functioning? That person was sent as a decoy. Decoys keep you away from where you belong. That's what a decoy does. It shifts your attention from where it should be to where it should not be. You finally get in your walk with God right. They call you and they ain't never called you before. You were on my spirit. You be like, ah, oh, Lord, we ain't never talked before. Why are you? And you even say, how did you get my number? Decoys. Things that only show up when you're going up. That makes you stop looking vertical just to look lateral. No. If you look at the cross, Calvary's cross, the lateral, the earthly stretch is shorter than the vertical. Some of you should be paying more attention to your vertical. Because I know the money's on the earth, but the release of it is in heaven. I know healing is in medicine and science, but the real cure comes from up above. And I wish pastors 
leaders, those visiting here and watching, would stop the fluff preaching. If you're so discouraged you don't believe God anymore, find a replacement for yourself. Get out the way because you're making people sad. When I hear somebody preaching to my soul, I want to believe their soul is as happy as they're trying to make me be today. Am I talking right? I said, am I speaking well? You all can do this. I don't believe God's given me these deep sermons and series for a simple people. He's demanding something of us. I don't know what it fully is to send us the best musicians, to send us the best praise and worship leaders and teachers and directors, to send us the best choreographer, dancer, to send us what's next, the best executive pastor, to send us children who are learning to be the best tech savvy people in the world. What is all of this for? What is God molding us to become? This is not just your church. This is God's sanctuary. This is your refuge. And he said, I'll be there for anybody who prays out of this place. I'm holding God to his word. Look at somebody and tell them, take God at his word. Take God at Rose, I fully believe your mother can be healed of cancer if you prayed in this place and don't get distracted if God did it for Pastor Mixon God does not do a thing once without pressing repeat he's the same yesterday today Before God heals the people, he must heal our land. Reason being, Curry, study this. Montez, study this. Vickers, one day I'll see how much Bible you know as you wore your collar the other week. I wanted you to wear it so I can now get into your business. I want to understand that y'all don't understand that the reason why he heals the land is healing the land is the same as healing the man. Because the man he created came from the land. What he's saying is, everywhere the sole of your feet shall trod, I'll bless every step you take after you walk out of my sanctuary. When you leave God's house, his presence goes with you. And those steps, if you're a good man, they are ordered... They're ordered by the Lord and God delights in him. We went to the gym today, me and my group of fellas. We methodically, strategically, and professionally worked legs. When you do that, it takes most of the strength out of you if you do it right. We then went to fellowship and eat lunch. When I got ready to leave lunch because Bishop Pleasant was here, I was going to go fellowship with him because that's what you do as a kingdom father to a guy who's actually your son. You spend more time with him. The Lord told me, Go home and go to bed. I said, what's going on? He says, I need you alert tonight. So he gets no time, especially when it's mine. I went home. See, y'all don't know how to handle that. I laid down on my recliner. And I went to sleep. 
I'm not a dreamer. But I dreamt six of your faces in my sleep. I won't tell it right now. I went to sleep, saw your face. God brought you before me, held a meeting with me about you. And I was like, Lord Jesus, don't show me no more. He said, no, I want to talk to you. Now, all of you feeling funny is because you know there's something you're hiding. See, when you ain't got nothing to hide, you're okay with what he shows. Some of you ain't okay. I heard what you said behind my back. I heard it. You not my dude. I heard you today. I just I wasn't even hurt when I got up. God said, now study. I said, Lord, why you show me that? He says, I want you to watch what I'm going to do to them. He said, because when they talked about you, they sinned against me. I said to him, no, no, you're going to miss it. I said to him, can I stop you? He said, yes. He said, but if you stop me, don't ask me later. He said, Moses did that and I didn't kill the people. Then he started throwing things at him. He said, now, if you stop me, I'm going to let them finish what they're doing. So the two of you, you're going to finish. The four of you, you're going to get hurt. When does it start? It starts tomorrow morning. And two of you, man, because you said, that's witchcraft. No, that's your future. It starts tomorrow. What? Your land is going to get sick. He's not going to directly touch you. He's going to touch everything with your name on it. And you ain't going to have nobody to run to. Because everybody runs to you. If God does not get the church back to a place of consecration. Back to a place of sanctification. Back to the place where you know your limits in every relationship. I love my daddy, but I'll never call him Aaron. Y'all understand? You've got to know to every relationship not to get familiar. Always know your limits. Snitches get stitches. All of my members, especially my young members, know this. You will never find more than three people who really care about you. Care is there not just to say I care. It's there when no one else is around. Stop waiting on people to uphold you. Get to the place where you belong. Give God his worship. Give God his time. Give God his moments. And watch how much your life changes for the better. For we know that all things, y'all quiet, work together for the good of them who love God. To them who are the called of God. And they work according to his purpose. I appreciate y'all hanging in there tonight because things are about to shift for the better. Do you believe it? I'm going to ask you again. Do you believe it? Things are about to change. It will work out for the good of them. No matter what the problem you can solve them they will come but don't you worry it will work out 
Y'all too quiet for the good of them who love the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard my cry and pitied my every groan. Long as I live and trouble rise, I'll hasten. Yeah, I like that. I'll hasten to his throne. Get your gifts ready, whatever signs. If you're not upset, give well. If you are, keep it and go to White Castles or something. I shouldn't even say White Castles. I done got hungry. Yeah, all the hood ain't out of me. I still like White Castle. Bring your gifts of whatever size, whatever magnitude. You that are watching by social media, I believe in this saying, sow where you grow. If we blessed you, if the word of God has enhanced you and made you better, then please sow into this ministry. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey there, Apostle. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you all. Thank you for coming, James Brown. Everyone standing, have you finished giving? Did you give what the Lord has required? Pray over it, and y'all can go ahead. On tonight only, I don't know why, I want you all to hold hands. I want you to find someone's hand to hold. I'm okay, thank you. I want you to find someone's hand to hold. I want you to spiritually ask God to give that person strength. Because you don't know what they're going through right now. I don't hear your mouth. Right now, the person near you was about to give up until you became a source of strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Then it says in this old song, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. You're touching who you may not even have feelings for at all. They don't need your feelings. They need your faith. See, you can't get hurt if your feelings ain't involved. Let your faith be where it belongs and let your feelings stay where they belong. When people make me upset, I tell them I'm okay. They be like, I don't believe so, but I am. As long as what you did don't penetrate my faith, I'm good because my feelings are not my source of strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I rebuke death tonight for some reason. Holy music. Holy music. I rebuke death tonight. I'm not going to expose who it is, but somebody was going to die in their sleep by tomorrow. But I rebuke death. This church is not ready for a funeral. We rebuke death in Jesus' name. And Lord, we ask you, give this person an extension. Asha. And in the middle of this life extension, heal them. If you call them home, let them leave not of any diseases.
I know y'all don't believe me, but if you knew who I was, you better ask somebody. I know when I see something. Now, God, the members today that are holding hands with someone, let them not exchange weaknesses. Let them exchange strengths only. No burdens, just blessings. God sent a, f I feel fresh air. No, for real, you're going to feel it even in your breathing. God said, that's how clear it's going to start coming. It's going to be like a coolness, like a fresh, it's like a fresh wind. There it is. Receive that. You want to act like you can tell, huh? Fresh wind of the Holy Ghost. Claim us. Lord, we cry sanctuary. We cry sanctuary. And Lord, as I exit the building, but never your presence, I ask you in a humoristic way, all of them that came tonight become their stalker. Holy Ghost, follow them to work, home, sleep. And whatever you see in their lives that's not up to par, fix it in Jesus' name. Fix it like only you can. And Lord, I ask you respectfully, fix it quick, fast, and in a hurry. That by Sunday, we have testimonies. By Pentecost, we have more than we've ever had before. We cry sanctuary. Now fix it, Holy Ghost. Do it like only you can. Give a sweet rest. Take four hours and make it feel like a week. Refresh our minds. Refresh our bodies. Replenish our bank accounts. Upgrade our company. Increase our strength. Now let the words of my mouth Hallelujah. 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 Hanbada Dios kete bakai. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 Lord. He manjo shele kambran sebora. Let it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength. And my Redeemer. Yes. 